Hello friends, welcome to Veranda CA. Let us continue with the quick revision of the remaining part of chapter 3 of your paper 7 Enterprises Information System. So are you all ready? Let's begin. So today we're going to start with the different controls based on information systems functions. Different controls based on information systems functions. We have seen controls based on objectives, preventive, detective and corrective. We've seen controls based on uh, information system resources. Yeah, we have environmental control, physical access control and logical access control. This is the third category which is based on information systems functions. Now under this there are two heads. We've already studied this in our chapter number two, the two types of control. Management control and application control. Management control and application control. What are management controls? Controls that are applicable throughout the organization at all levels and applicable to all the components of information system. It could be a server, it could be a desktop, it could be a laptop. It's applicable at all levels through all the components of the information system network. So now we have the management control uh, framework and this these consist of the controls that are decided by the top level management. So these are the controls that are decided by the top level management. And then we have application control framework. If you remember application, it is built inside the application and it is specific to a single application. Specific to a single application. Now if you look at management control framework, first would be the top level. Top level management control, uh, top level management controls top level management controls. Now these are the controls that are set by the top level management and we as auditor need to audit those controls. Next is going to be systems development management control. So first we have top level. What do the top level do? They need to ensure that the system acquisition or system development is correct in the uh, organization. System development management control. Next we have programming management control. Programming management control. After that data resource management control. What is the meaning of data resource management control? Every organization has data as its core assets. Now these data need to be kept very very secured and safe because otherwise there could be a lot of fines, penalties, a lot of implications. So now these are the data resources control, data resource management control. After that one of the main things security management control. Then we have quality assurance management control and operations management control, operations management control. So once again applicable throughout the organization at all levels in the organization. Now the management controls once again let us go through the list. Top level management control, systems development management control, programming management control, data resource management control, security management control, quality assurance management control and the general operations management control. General operations management control. So we have about seven managerial controls that we're going to study. And then here in application control framework, when you talk about application control framework, what are the things? See, first is boundary. Okay, boundary is what the access point of anyone into the application. So first you have the boundary controls. You prevent any unauthorized access at the first level. So boundary control. After boundary control, someone can, so someone has got the access to the application. Now what next they will do is they will go and input some data into the system, into the application software. So next we have is input control, input control. After input what happens? After input, there is some processing which is done by the application. Some processing done by the application. Now, now that is processing controls. Processing controls. After the processing happens, the data is stored. Stored in a place called database. So then we have database controls. After database controls, it is uh, there is an output which is generated. Output controls. And this output is then communicated to the other users in the organization. It could be stakeholders, it could be management. So now those are the output controls. So very chronological order if you think of a transaction. Anyone entering into an application software. So that is boundary control. After he enters into the uh, software, he will try to make or insert an input. So that is input control. After the input is inserted, there will be some level of processing. That is the processing control. After that data is stored in a database, database control. After the database control, now this um, there is an output which is generated, output control and this output will be communicated to the other stakeholders in the organization. 
So then we have output and communication controls. So if you're clear about the names of the controls, let us go and look into each of the controls. Are you all clear? Are you all clear about the names of which control falls where? So they're going to just tell you that, you know, uh, list boundary controls, list the uh, set of boundary controls. So you're going to uh, have to identify and mention in your answer that boundary controls forms a part of application control framework. Clear? Yes? Okay, let's go ahead and see the different types of controls. To begin with, let us see the managerial control framework. Top management controls. Now the top management of any organization, very essential because they are the people who set the mission, vision, objectives for the entire organization. Tell me something. If the top management is very lethargic, lazy, no direction, okay, in that case, will the organization function at its best uh, quality, best potential? No. So the top management needs to be active, smart, and have some direction for the company. Okay, so now the top management needs to put in some controls at certain level. What are those levels? Number one, so the uh, word for this is Paul C. Paul C. Or you can remember it as policy. Paul C. Okay, planning, organizing, leading, controlling. Planning, organizing, leading, controlling. Now, under planning, it is the main plan for the entire information system infrastructure of the organization. Now, this plan needs to be uh, in tune with the objectives of the organization. For example, if there is a company which uh, is into, uh, say, uh, delivery, of, um, delivery of some material, okay, delivery of iron ore. Now, that company, delivery of iron ore and iron ore is generally bought by businesses. It's not bought by consumers. Clear? So now this delivery of iron ore, for that, do they need to build an e-commerce website with, you know, shopping features or attractive carts and all that? No, they have to build uh, some information oriented website that will give uh, the consumers, uh, that will give the con their consumers, which is nothing but other business entities, some information about what is the product that is dealt with, what are the uh, accreditations they have, what are the certificates they have. So planning organize, planning means, it means planning the entire infrastructure network in such a way that it is in alignment with the organization goals. Organizing. Now, after a plan is set, they need to organize the resources in order to meet with that plan. So organizing actually means that they need to organize people, systems, processes, funds, in order to be able to act upon their plan. Leading. Now, leading means uh, motivating the employees, setting in all the systems in place, training the employees, understanding the process flow of each of the transactions, and communicating that with the employees. And finally, we have controlling. Now, we have to have controls in controlling. Also, controlling means but nothing but you check what is your progress, and if there is a if 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 there is a deviation then you take the report to the top management if there is a deviation you report it to the top management and take corrective actions regarding the deviation so four points here planning organizing leading and controlling <coughs> planning organizing leading controlling planning organizing leading controlling next Systems Development Management Control. Now, this is amended syllabus in your uh, CA book, amended portion of this uh, chapter. So, that's why it could be a little important. Systems Development Management Control. How the systems are developed in any organization. Now, suppose the organization is uh, booking tickets for consumers. Will they have similar sets of systems when compared to an Ed tech company, a company which is providing education online. Yeah, will the systems be same? No. So, depending on the nature of the business, the system needs to be developed entirely, right? So, ticketing uh, app or ticketing business may have different systems. Education business will have a different system framework. Hospitality or uh, health services will have different systems. In that case, it is very essential that we understand the various stages in any system development life cycle clear now the code word for this is pa in ha out pa in ha out okay pa in ha out now let us see what this stands for pa problem definition and feasibility assessment p for 
problem definition and feasibility assessment. So first, you understand what is the problem. Uh, do you want to solve a particular problem in your organization? For example, do you want to automate some system because, uh, you know, uh, extra costs are being incurred to complete that task manually? Or do you want to see some opportunity which is there in the market? You want to go and explore new avenues such as uh, uh, cryptocurrencies or some entertainment uh, sector. Do you want to go and explore those segments? So define what is the problem. Okay, and feasibility assessment. Feasibility assessment, you need to check the fund requirement for that problem and get necessary approvals from the management. Approvals from the management in order to tell you that if you can go in to set the systems for that or no. Problem definition and feasibility assessment. Pa in, ha out. P, P for problem definition and feasibility assessment. A, A for Analysis of the existing systems. Someone says, oh no, I, I know that this is the problem definition, but I already have the system in place to solve that, just that it's not being in use. So first you understand what is the existing system framework which is there in your company. For example, the problem is that people are spending too much of time on social networking sites during the office hours. So you already have a firewall, but you have not activated that firewall. So you can re renew the firewall license, set in proper firewall proxy servers, clear? So analysis of the existing systems in the organization. Pa, P for problem definition, A, A for analysis of existing, six, existing systems, analysis of existing systems. Pa in, in for information processing system design. Information processing system design. So it's very important that we understand the process flow of the system. Process flow of the system. Pa in, ha out. Ha, ha for H for hardware and software access uh, development, hardware and software development. So based on the feasibility study, based on what you want to, uh, which system you want to go for, you need to have a hardware and software development committee so that that committee can help us build the best software, build the best hardware to solve the problem that we identified in step number one. Clear? Pa in, ha out. Pa, pa for, pa, pa for problem identity identification problem identification a a for analysis of existing system analysis of the existing system in information flows you have to check the information flows in the company h h for hardware software access uh, hardware and software development hardware and software development a acceptance testing and conversion acceptance testing means nothing but trial run you sit set in the system at for a small modular uh, level and in that you put some test transactions and see if the software is running reports that are generating accurate or that is solving the problem that you identified in step one acceptance testing and conversion what is the meaning of conversion it means that now i have in the acceptance testing i have passed the hardware and software that i built uh, in step number four I've passed that, so it's good to go. Now I have to convert from my old systems to this new system that has been developed. I have to convert from the old system to the new system. And now in that, that is known as conversion. It will requ uh, require some level of steps to be undertaken. Next, we have operation and maintenance. So with regards to operations, I have to take uh, make sure that the system is regularly updated. Make sure it is maintained with clear EMIs and all that, right? So operations and maintenance, I have to check by uh, comparing the reports with the uh, planned reports. Clear? Operations and maintenance. Pa in, ha out. Pa, problem definition, problem identification. A, analysis of the existing system. In, information flows. Ha, H, H for hardware and software development. A, A for acceptance testing or conversion, acceptance testing or conversion and out, out O, O for operations and maintenance, operations and maintenance, clear? With systems development management controls, amended, important, great, <clears throat> right? So these are the things that we've studied. Stakeholders must understand the importance of safeguarding the assets, yeah, these are the 
four objectives of controls that we saw in the last class. Four objectives of controls. Tell me what is it without seeing, without seeing, tell me what is it? Data integrity, asset safeguarding, system effectiveness, system efficiency. Okay. Data integrity, uh, safeguarding assets, uh, system efficiency, system effectiveness. Now, stakeholders must understand that do a feasible st feasibility study and get approvals. Analysis of existing system. So, I have to understand organization's history, culture and understand my existing products and information flow. How my new problem or new product can be uh, combined within the existing system. I have to check that. <clears throat> okay, uh, third step, information flow, design of database. Check the uh, design of hardware or software platform. Check all the physical designs that you have existing in your uh, system software. Okay. Hardware, software access and procedures development. Get a request for uh, request for quotations. Evaluate the quotation. Take the final decision on whether you want to develop the software in-house or procure it. Specify user activities and get output or feedback. User activities, you need to get a detailed list of the uh, things that are need to be there in the system. For example, an app wants to connect to Google Maps using API to get the location details of the customers. In that, you have to understand the detailed requirements of the user. That why do I need location access? How will it solve my uh, core business? Clear? Acceptance testing to identify errors or deficiencies before you release it. Conversion activities to place new system into operations. Okay, formal pro operation and maintenance, formal process to record the need for changes, authorize and control the implementation of controls, maintenance activities to be approved and monitor, maintenance activities should be approved and monitored. Clear? Now the next question is on program development life cycle. So far we have studied systems uh, development life cycle okay systems acquisition or systems development life cycle now we're moving to program development life cycle under that we have planning design coding testing operations and maintenance control phase clear so six steps here planning designing coding Testing, any program for that matter, yeah, any application that you want to develop. So, first was the system hardware software development. Now, here it is the application that you want to build or a program that you want to run using the computer. So, first step is planning. Next, you design it with what are the menus that are going to be there, the options that is needed. You give it to a coder. You enable coding of the idea. Next is testing. Now, this testing is of three types. Unit testing, integrated testing and whole of program testing unit testing where i test a small bit of a uh, small part of the entire program that has been developed integrated testing where i test one entire module say for example finance module of an erp software i test that entire module whole of program testing i test the entire aspect of the erp system whole of program testing so unit testing integrated testing whole of program testing clear Next, we have operations and maintenance. So, there are three types of maintenance that's given. Repair maintenance, adaptive maintenance and perfective maintenance. What is the meaning of repair maintenance? Any logical errors that could come in the program, you need to fix that. Adaptive maintenance, any program uh, is coded in a wrong way, you need to fix that. Perfective maintenance, now this is important for MCQ. Perfective maintenance, tuned to decrease resource consumption. So, uh, your software the resources it's using yeah so you need to make sure that the resources are at the lowest level and the output is at the highest level so for that you need to engage into perfective maintenance which means tuned to decrease resource consumption operations and maintenance yes guys the next is control phase now in control phase it needs to run in parallel to all the other phases it needs to run in parallel to the other phases Control is nothing but checking if there are any uh, corrective actions to be taken place, any errors that are happening and any corrective actions that need to be taken place. Monitors planned with actual data. So the techniques of controlling uh, phase would be PERT charts, GAN charts, yeah, program evaluation review technique, your GAN charts. Now they will help you to check if there is any variance in the actual. 
clear? Clear with the two management controls, management controls. Going to the third management control, data resource management control. Data resource. Now the data, it's a key resource for every any entity, data resource. Now here, when I say data resource, resource management controls, it comes here and it also comes in application controls as database controls. What is the difference between this and this? Now, uh, generally a centralized uh, data storage will be there for every organization, right? Now this centralized database, now what the management decides, the policies to control the uh, access to this database that is known as managerial controls. And for every application, there is some data which is there in the application, okay? So the database controls for the application would mean specific to the application. Now, data resource management controls, the key to remember this is A, B, C, ultimate data quality controls. A, B, C, ultimate data quality controls. A, B, C, ultimate data quality controls. Okay, so A stands for access controls. A for access controls. B for backup and existence controls. So, access controls means you should have proper user ID, password, authentication methods, PIN, biometrics, okay, you should have um, two-factor authentication, is there some, there needs to be someone else to approve the person who is give, uh, granted access, okay, role-based access controls based on access matrix, clear? So, access controls are uh, controls that restrict only authorized access into the database. B, B for backup and existence controls, what is the meaning of backup and existence control? In case of a uh, disaster, in case of something happening to the data, say sudden power out or floods, anything happening to the data, it needs to be retrieved within no time. So what are your backup and existence controls? You, do you have your uh, DRP, disaster recovery planning? Do you have your BCP modules, your business continuity plans? All of that, is that documented? Is that working effectively? Clear? Next is C. So A for access controls, B for backup and existence controls, C for concurrency controls, concurrency controls. Now this controls means that when two or more resources are trying to access the database together, okay, you remember contention, we discussed the issues solved by network. We had routing, bandwidth, uh, resilience and contention. So contention means that when there's some conflict where two or more uh, people are trying to access the same resource. Similarly, concurrency controls are also on the same lines. When two or more applications are trying to access the same database, in that case, how will the database uh, decide what to go for, uh, you know, what to store first, what to store next? So, concurrency control in case of some conflicts, how should the, the data resource address this conflict? Update control, ultimate data quality, UDC. A, B, C, ultimate data quality controls. A, B, C, ultimate data quality controls. Now, U, U stands for update controls, okay? Update controls. Who has made updates into the database? You should be able to see that through logs. Through logs, you should be able to see who has made updates to the data resources. D, D for definition controls. All the database should uh, uh, restrict themselves to, to some specific uh, design standards or some de uh, definitions that are there, okay, definition controls. And finally, we have quality controls. What is the meaning of quality controls? The data that is stored needs to adhere to some quality standards as decided by the organization. Quality controls also need to be in place to ensure data is not stored haywire or in some random fashion. It needs to adhere to some specific quality. So, A, B, C, ultimate data quality controls. A for access control. Or if you close your eyes, tell me the answer. A, A for access control. B for backup and existence control. C, C for concurrency of controls. Ultimate data quality control. U, U for update controls. D, D for definition controls. And ultimate data quality. Q, quality. Q for quality controls. Q for quality controls. Clear with the answer? Perfect. Next, guys, is security management functions controls. Now, I need to ensure that my assets are secure. Secure means physically and logically. Recoverable after disaster, 
So now this includes your BCP and your DRP. Please note that the name of this is not disaster management controls. The name of this is security management functions control. Under security, it needs to be secure. Under security, I have my BCP and DRP. BCP and DRP is under the security management functions control. Be a little careful here. It could be misleading. Okay, BCP, DRP. Under DRP, I have few four types of plans. Emergency plan, backup plan, recovery plan and test plan. Emergency plan, in case of an emergency, something, uh, if all the systems are shut down, how, how am I going to retrieve my uh, network? Backup plan. Do I have backup to, at the fixed times? Do I have rules for backup? Do I take regular backup? And backup is taken until when? Until uh, 15 days ago or until one week ago or until yesterday or until uh, it's a real time backup. I need to decide what is my backup plan. Recovery. In the case of a disaster, how do I recover fast from that situation? Test plan. Okay. So, I need to test all these plans if they are working well or not. Okay. And then BCP. BCP is carrying out critical business in the event of a disaster, which means disaster recovery planning is after the disaster has happened. But BCP is during the disaster when the... So, imagine Gmail. Okay. We all use Gmail very often. It was, uh, you know, a few months ago, Gmail uh, server, something had happened which we, none of us has experienced before or information flow was not fast. So, we didn't know if anyone experienced that before. But nationwide, uh, the Google servers were shut down. No one could access their Google IDs. Yeah, no, no Google services they could access. So, it became a very huge thing because we're so used to being uh, on the move. Yeah, we're always there on Google either seeing something or checking our mails. Similarly, with some bank servers, when banks during public holidays or during late nights, they undergo some um, IT maintenance work. During that time, their website does not work. It's inoperative. During that time, people who want to urgent send money, uh, uh, you know, they are in urgent need to send money, they do face the blow because they want the servers to be functioning when they need it the most. So, how will you carry out your critical business in the event of a disaster? So, say a disaster happens. In that case, do you have the capability to uh, start up your systems immediately? To start up your systems immediately. Next, we have operations management control. Operations, so we have seen top level management control, system development control, programming control. Uh, the next we saw was security control, which has BCP and DRP. Now, we are seeing operations management control. Operations ma management control. <clears throat> Operations as the name suggests, daily running of the hardware and software functions. Daily running of the hardware and software functions. Okay. It could be computer operations, network operations. <clears throat> computer operations, if they are working fine, all the components of the computer system are working fine. Network operations, data preparation and entry, file library, documentation and program library, technical support, capacity planning and performance monitoring, management of outsourced operations. Okay. Now, you don't have to really by heart this answer, but you can think of it logically. Now, we're doing operations management control. Tell me in the daily operations, what are the things you work on every day? Your computers, so computer operations. You work on the network or you access the network on a daily basis, so network operations. And then you have some data preparation work, data entry work. Yeah, you need to make sure that the keyboard is in the right condition. If your keyboard is not working, how will you make the entries for the day? It will be hampered. So, data preparation and entry controls. File library. You need to store your file. Say, for example, tomorrow the location is not accessible. I'm not able to store my file in my server. Then where do I store it? Tomorrow if I store it somewhere else, I may forget that where have I stored it. In that case, the file gets lost. So, file library controls are also very important documentation and program library where the programs are stored in c folder i have to have proper controls in those folders technical support every organization every office has a high it help desk is the it help desk there, there? if my uh, system suddenly goes off i uh, you know something happens my files are deleted once i can switch it off and switch it on but then still nothing works i need to go and take it to my it help desk this IT help desk will help me solve my problem. Capacity planning and performance monitoring. 
Now the top management needs to see that on the office floor, how many systems are there? How many employees are sitting? Is there uh, lesser utilization of space? Can we put in one more department? Can we put in seven, eight more people in the office? Clear? Capacity planning and performance monitoring. Management of outsourced operations. There could be few activities that we have outsourced it to third party. Okay, for example, we have outsourced payroll to the third party or we have outsourced BPO functions to the third party. In that case, how are we putting in controls to ensure, to ensure that these uh, uh, entities, the vendors, do not have access to our data that they should not be seeing. Management of outsourced operations. So very easy, operations management control. You work on computers every day, you access the network every day, yeah, and then uh, data entry and preparation, and then you save the file, file library, program library, file library, program library, then you go to the IT help desk, technical support, then it is seen whether the resources are being utilized properly. Is there extra space in the server? that I can, uh, you know, fill things with. I can have a knowledge management on the server. So capacity planning and performance monitoring. Then I have management of outsourced operations, management of outsourced operations. Clear? So we're doing operations management control. Next, quality assurance management control. Now I need to make sure that my quality goals are there and it meets with the uh, standards, quality standards. So there would be some benchmark in my industries. I need to make sure my systems are meeting the benchmark. For example, if there's a company that comes up with maps, with maps. Now these maps, we're so used to Google Maps as in uh, the ease of Google Maps or the accuracy of Google Maps. So any company which is now going to develop their own maps need to make sure they meet up to that level or that standard of work. Quality goals, compliances, best practices. Quality compliance and best practices. All right, so clear with the management control framework, very good. Moving on to application control framework. Moving on to application control framework. <clears throat> Why do I need application control framework for CAR? Completeness, accuracy and reliability of data during its input, update and storage. During the input of data, update or processing of data, and storage of data, I need some controls to make sure that uh, unauthorized entries are not passed. Yeah, some people have not taken money to, into their accounts from my bank account and uh, recorded it wrongly. Need to make sure all those does not happen to my system. Controls to ensure objectives are met. And again, you can write the same objectives. You already know that data, integrity, asset, safeguarding, system effectiveness, system efficiency. An audit trail should be maintained. What is the meaning of audit trail? From the start of a transaction till the end, I need to have the record or the log of all the transactions. Clear? Audit trail controls need to be mentioned. Two types of audit trails. There is something known as accounting audit trail or and operations audit trail. Accounts audit trail, accounting audit trail and operations audit trail. Now this accounting audit trail is for the events that are happening and operation audit trail is for the resources that are being used. Resources that are being used. Now for this class, for example, the event is that, uh, yeah, the lecture is going on, we're doing chapter three, that would be the event, the time would be recorded, right? But resources, what are the resources that have been used, that are being used during this recording, okay? So there is some, uh, blackboard, there is some screen, there is some pen, there is a vacuum board. So what are the various resources that would come in operations audit trail, operations audit trail. <coughs> Maintain a record of events within the subsystem. Maintain a record of attempted or actual resource consumption. Maintain a record of actual resource consumption, clear? Boundary controls, very important question. What are the different types of boundary controls? Capped up, capped up, capped up. The code word for this is capped up. Now C, C stands for cryptography. A for access, P for pin. Okay, now uh, D, A, P. D stands for digital signature, A for audit trails and P for plastic cards. So we have two P's, one is pin and one is plastic card, pin and plastic card. Now, when I say cryptographic controls, what does it mean? 
you've studied about that ciphertext, public key, private key, converting the data into cipher data so that it's not uh, read by unauthorized people. And only the person who has the key can decrypt the data, can decrypt the encrypted data. Now, the techniques for this is transposition, substitution and product cipher. Transposition, substitution and product cipher. Okay. <clears throat> Next, access controls, user identification, authentication and authorization. Now, the various access controls would be identify who is the person who is trying to gain access into your system. After you identify, then authenticate them. How do I authenticate them? Send them an OTP. If they enter the correct OTP, then they will be allowed into the um, system. So, authenticate them and authorization. Authorization means what are the things that they can, they have access to see. They have access to see that will be based on my access metrics. Access matrix, what are the things that I can see after I enter into the system or uh, into the application. Clear? Yes. Now, going to the next one, PIN. Generation, the, so they've just amended a little bit portion of uh, this answer as well. They're trying to say that the life cycle of a PIN is such that it has so many steps and in all these steps, controls need to be uh, there. What are the steps in the life cycle of a PIN? First, the PIN is generated. Second, the PIN is issued and delivered to the customer. You remember in, when we opened a bank account, we got an envelope at home and then we had to from the side tear it off and then peep inside that and read what is the number given. Yeah. So, generation of PIN, issue and delivery of that PIN, validation of the PIN. Once I enter it, the system is going to validate it. Transmission, they are going to transmit it, process it, process the transaction, store what has happened change in case the pin is going to be changed then you change that in the database replacement and termination finally if the pin or uh, otp is not in use then you terminate it terminate it so that no one else can use it okay so is it possible that once i've changed my password will i get access into my account if i use the original or the uh, previous password no so that has been terminated that is no more in use no more links to my account number Digital signatures. Digital signatures, DSC, is given by certifying authorities. Certifying authorities, it is used to sign electronically um, validate information. Plastic cards. Now, plastic cards is mainly for identification. Application of plastic, again, they've given the life cycle of an uh, plastic card. Application of the plastic card, I need to apply, ma'am, ma'am, give me ID card. After that, they will prepare the ID card. They will issue it to me. I will use it. After I use it and I am going to leave the school or office, I return the ID card and they make sure to destroy the ID card so that no one can take that ID card, steal that ID card and reuse it to enter the office. Clear? They need to destroy that ID card. Termination of card. This is the life cycle of a card and controls need to be there in all these cycles, in all these steps. Next is audit trail control. Audit trail controls. Okay, so under uh, all of the application controls, one of the point is audit trail controls where they are trying to say what is the accounting audit trail and operating audit trails with respect to each of these controls. Cryptographic controls, C for cryptographic controls, A for access controls, P for PIN, D for digital signature, A for audit trail controls, P for personal ID card, plastic cards, personal ID cards. Now, under input control, we have data code control, transcription, transposition, transcription, transposition, data code control. <coughs> uh, transcription includes addition, subtraction, and substitution. Addition, subtraction, substitution. So, if I a uh, number is there, for example, the number is uh, 35. So, to 35, I add another digit, 351. That means addition. I subtract. Instead of 35, I record it as only 3. I record it as only 3. Okay. So, that becomes subtraction. And substitution. Instead of 35, I write 53. I substitute the digits. Okay. Or I write, instead of 35, I write 37. 
I substitute some digit with another digit. Now, these are the input controls we are doing. Input controls means while entering the input in the system, what are the various controls that we need to keep in mind so that the input that is there in the system is accurate. If the input is wrong, if the input is entered wrongly, the resulting transactions will also be wrong. For example, I entered the loan amount wrongly. The interest that is auto calculated by the uh, by the system will also be wrong clear the message that goes to the customer that this is the interest due okay that also becomes wrong clear so data code controls I need to ensure that transcription and transposition transposition means single transposition or multiple transposition the, the digits are changed if I write 35 is 53 it is transposition this is a single transposition. Multiple transposition means far away data is uh, the numbers. Suppose it's a big number from the last digit to the first digit. It is changed. Far away it is changed. Multiple transposition. Data code controls. Next is batch controls. Now there are a few transactions that are processed not in individuals but in batches. For example, uh, your credit cards, your checks. It is not processed one by one. It is processed in batches. Okay, at the end of every month, all the transactions will be clubbed together and then you will receive a statement or checks. Towards the end of the day, all the checks that are collected in the bank will be deposited for collection. So, batch controls is for the uh, transactions that are processed in batches. Okay, now under that we have financial totals, hash totals and document totals. To understand this, let us take a simple example of a classroom with uh, 50 students. Okay, 50 students and then... A teacher is correcting their paper. Say she is correcting their science paper. So financial totals would mean that the total of all the uh, marks that they have got. The, the sum total of all the marks that they have got. Financial totals. The totals of all the counts. Hash total. Hash total means so everyone has a roll number. Say 10300. 10301. 10302. 10303. Like that 50 students have different roll numbers. Now when you total one of this uh, series in that that is known as hash totals okay total one of the uh, columns total one of the columns document total that is 50 students so 50 is the document totals now you can have these totals to ensure that what you're processing is correct so say for example have you processed in the batch there were 50 transactions but have I uh, missed out co to correct one person's uh, paper I will understand that if I do a document total. Clear? Yes. Next is validation of in data input controls. Validation of data input controls. In that I have field check, record check, batch check, file check. Data input controls. Once the data has been inputted, what is the field? For example, in age, someone has entered a alphabetical uh, digit. They have not given a numerical digit. They have given an alphabetical digit. So field check, record check batch check and file check clear next is audit trail controls audit trail controls so under input controls i have data code controls batch controls validation controls data code controls batch controls validation controls data code controls batch controls validation controls clear next moving on to communication controls okay uh, physical component control all the controls that should be established in the communication line so that the data that is transmitted Data that is transmitted is free from unauthorized access or entry or modification. So physical component controls. No one should be able to use the manager's uh, landline number to make calls. Line error control. Some disturbance in the line. Need to clear that. Flow control. Link control. Topological controls. Channel access controls. Control over subversive threat. Internet working controls. In internetworking controls, internetworking controls and audit trail controls, audit trail controls. So few communication controls, you can read inside that, two liners under each of these. <coughs> Physical components control, line error control, flow control, link control, topological controls, channel access controls, control over subversive threat, internet networking control, internetworking controls and audit trail controls. Next, we have processing controls. Processor controls, you remember the processing we did in the previous part where we studied uh, virtual memory, CPU, primary memory. 
yeah all the uh, parts of the cpu and um, processing uh, uh, devices processor controls real memory controls virtual memory controls application software controls and audit trail controls okay so processor controls real memory controls virtual controls application software controls at each of these levels i need to build in controls to ensure that the transactions are working fine they are being processed correctly database control okay like how we have mafia like that ca kafia ca kafia the, this is the code word for you to remember database controls ca kafia ca kafia ca kafia database controls important database controls cryptographic controls cryptographic similar to boundary what we had studied there same thing here cryptographic controls no one should be able to access the data which is stored in the database so for that i need to have cryptographic controls i need to encrypt the data that is stored here access controls c a c for cryptographic controls a a for access controls anyone accessing the database needs to have proper uh, password user id and access rights concurrency controls application software controls for anyone who is updating and reporting concurrency controls means if two or more resources try to access the database together how does the database react to that concurrency controls application software controls update and report controls update and report controls if there is anyone who is updating information in the database it needs to be mentioned in the log it needs to be mentioned in the log if there is anyone who is generating a report out of this then in what format have they generated the report all that needs to be uh, be a part of the log file handling controls file handling controls integrity controls i need to make sure that the data is correct data is correct free from unauthorized modifications integrity controls and audit trail controls so all of you database controls ca kafia ca kafia c c for cryptographic controls a a for access controls kafia c like mafia kafia okay c a kafia c for cryptographic control a for access control c for concurrency control a for application software controls application software controls f for file handling controls i for integrity controls and a for audit trail controls clear <coughs> next is output controls okay so on the output that comes out what is the controls that one needs to have now the keyword for that is go i b b o you can concentrate on b i b o that's the answer go i is just there go i b b o is the keyword for that <coughs> i b b o b i b o okay so b for batch output production batch output production and distribution controls so in a batch whatever are the reports generated how do you communicate with that to the uh, respective managers respective employees how do you communicate the output that is generated by batch processing batch report design controls batch report design controls all the so all the checks have been processed now these checks need to be uh, shown in some report as processed do you have a design for that do you have a uh, excel table or some design for that batch report design controls go i b o b i i for inference control statistics displayed rather than break up of items restriction controls so inference controls means in the dashboard i need to see what are the uh, in the i need to see what are the figures that are appearing in the dashboard only the uh, statistical figures should appear for example what is the total salary paid during the year but should i enable other people to see what is the break up of salary who did i give what salary to at what level did i give what salary no i want them to just see the total figure total salary figure so that is known as in the output make sure that in places where only statistics are needed you that is only displayed they should not be able to click on those statistics and get break up of items that would be disastrous so inference control inference control statistics displayed rather than break up of the amounts o o for online output production and distribution controls so now i'm going to uh, distribute this over email to the management yeah mis reports i'm going to distribute it 
to the management. So I need to ensure that I do not distribute it outside the company network or I do not distribute it to uh, unauthorized people. So online output production and distribution control. Online output production and distribution controls. At both these levels, I need to have some controls at the production or where I generate it and at the distribution level. Then I have audit trail controls. So can we do it again? B for batch, B for batch. B for batch output production and distribution controls. B for batch report design controls. Batch output controls, batch report controls. Bat batch output controls, batch report design controls. I, I for inference controls. Inference controls, inference controls. O, O for online output generation of uh, preparation and distribution control. Online output generation, preparation and distribution control. Clear? Next, we have segregation of duties controls. Please note that this is not covered uh, in the management or in the application controls. It is just a standalone control. So, there could be a standalone question on segregation of duties control. Okay. The code word for this is split work transaction and period. So separation of duty, you know the meaning, make a checker concept. Someone should be able to pass the entry, but the other person should approve what he has passed. He should not pass and approve it himself. Clear? So someone should pass the entry and the other person should approve what has been passed. So that is the meaning of segregation of duties controls. The code word is split the work transaction and period. Split the work transaction and period. Now under split, Split custody of high value assets, high value assets. For example, a bank locker, a bank locker. Should I give, keep one uh, tiny puny security guard outside the bank locker and give him a big metal key to access it? No. Okay. So high value assets, a bank locker has a lot of uh, stuff inside it. So I need to keep it under the security of two people. Or if it's a door which has some password, then half the password needs to be with one person, other half with an other person. So that they cannot do any manipulations and uh, pose a threat to the assets. So high value assets, split custody. Keep high value assets under split custody. Half password with one person, another half with another person. Split custody of high value assets. Work, workflow. Whatever workflow is there, yeah, which uh, is for very sensitive data. That workflow, you have some second level approvals or third level approvals, okay? So, you have higher approvals for sensitive work. Workflow have approvals, have many level of approvals in the workflow, which is for sensitive or critical data. Split work transactions. Transaction authorization. Every transaction needs to be prepared by someone and authorized by someone else authorized by someone else and period period means periodic review periodic review re, re, review at regular intervals whether the segregation of duties controls is working fine periodic review so all of you split work transaction period split work transaction period so split custody of high value assets workflow work for workflow transaction transaction authorization transaction authorization authorization period periodic review Okay, periodic review. Now, uh, to mitigate, to mis mitigate SOD control, uh, SOD risks. So, if I have segregation of duty risk, these are the two steps I can do to mitigate it. I can reduce access privileges for my employees. Yeah, do not give them any access so that uh, they cannot misuse it. Introduce a new mitigating control. Introduce a new mitigate. This is a separate question here. Segregation of duties controls. And this, this is a separate question for two marks. Okay, the, to mitigate that is reduce the access controls or implement a new, implement a new control. Clear? <coughs> Audit of environmental control. Audit of environmental control. Under that, so we've moved, we finished all the uh, application controls, managerial controls. Now we are going to audit each of these controls. So if you remember first we did environmental controls relating to fire, water and then we had pollution. Yeah. So regarding that what are the audit steps that you can do? 
power conditioning, backup, HVAC, heating, ventilation, air condition, water detection, fire detection, suppression and cleanliness and cleanliness. So, as an auditor, you need to check if these things are reviewed by the correct personnel and a review log is maintained. When did he do the last uh, checkup? When did he do any maintenance activities? Clear? Audit of environmental control. Audit of physical access controls. Proximity, physical access controls. Yeah. Proximity to hazards and marking. Is my uh, office building very close to some earthquake zone or very close to the beach where you know tsunami can happen marking the uh, you know vehicles that are parked inside my uh, organization do they indicate which which the vehicles do they indicate or do they have marked on to which company they belong to my laptop bags do they have marked which company it belongs to so that it, uh, people are more com uh, careful about that physical barriers surveillance guards and dogs key card systems very easy Audit of physical, please note we are not doing physical access controls, that was locks on door, logging, we are doing audit of physical access controls. So under that, proximity to hazards, physical uh, barriers, surveillance, guards and dogs and key card systems, having key card systems. Audit of logical access controls. Now under logical access, so we finish uh, audit of environmental controls, audit of physical controls, third is audit of logical access controls should check the network access paths and documentation. So, I need to check the entire from where information is flowing and how it is flowing in data packets, it's moving to servers, What is, is there a firewall? Yeah, I need to check how the information is flowing. Under that, I need to check user access controls, whether authentication, access violations, account logout, intuition detection, dormant account, shared account system. I need to check each of these items under user access controls. Then I need to check if the company has a proper password management in place, password management system in place. User access provisioning, user access provisioning, access request, access approvals, user access provisioning means granting an access to a new employee. New employee has joined, he's going to raise a request for access, you're going to grant the access to him based on his duties, his roles and responsibilities. So you see if there is a request process, if that request is approved, if how do I add the new employee in the system, segregation of duties, how do I check that whatever work he does or whatever entries he's passed is being approved by the management and is there any logs to maintain the access reviews. Employee termination, very important. Once the employee leaves the office, is there a termination process? Do I remove his rights, access rights, access review, review of the rights that he can have. User access logs, okay, user access logs. Do I have centralized logs, logs protection, log review, log retention. Investigative procedures, investigation policies and procedures, computer crime investigation, computer forensics. <clears throat> so under investigative procedures, I have investigation policies. Okay, if I want to investigate a transaction in my company, okay, for example, a bank, how did he give loan to a businessman and then it resulted in some scam? So, I want to investigate the entire transaction. Do I have some investigation policy in place? Do I have a computer crime investigation team? Do I have a computer forensics team that will understand the transactions through the computer? It is very different in a physical environment versus a computer environment. So, do I have a forensics team to understand the computer transaction? Internet point of presence. Uh, see, we're doing audit of logical controls. However, these questions can be asked individually also. For example, they can ask what are the various internet points of presence for any entity. So first, you need to check that logical access controls under that internet points of presence because through the internet, people, come, people can come and access the data. Clear? Uh, hack the system through the internet or insert some virus, worms, whatever through the internet. So I need, it's very important for me as an auditor to check that where is the company active on the internet. Search engine. On Google, do I have a page for the company? Do I have a Google uh, address for the company, Google presence? Social networking sites. Is the company there on LinkedIn, Twitter? Is the company there on Instagram? Online sales. Does the company have a website through which it does online sales? Domain name. Does the company have a domain name on GoDaddy or on um, it has a website on Shopify? Does it have a domain name? What is the domain name? Is it a unique name? Can someone change it? Yeah. 
justification of online presence. Is it really mandatory for the company to run its business to be online or is it just there to uh, protect uh, for the misuse by employees? Is it just there for misuse by employees? So internet points of presence, search engine, social networking sites, online sales, domain name, justification of online presence. Five points on internet points of presence. Clear guys? Great. So we've seen uh, from the beginning, we've seen audit of uh, various controls, management controls, application controls. After that, we saw audit of these controls. Now, we also saw in between segregation of duties controls. Please note, it is not a part of management or application. It is in other control. And then we saw audit of the uh, audit of environmental control, audit of physical access control, audit of logical access controls. Under audit of lo logical access controls, we have many points and uh, <coughs> We have discussed each of these points. However, the uh, points, I would request you to read it once from the material, the inside part, right? Clear. Thank you very much.